Hey everyone, welcome to the songwriting studio. My name is Dean and in today's video, we are doing a garage band bootcamp for beginners. In the last few years, I've had the privilege of producing over 30 songs for paying clients in GarageBand. And more than that, I've gotten to train tons of students, both here locally and online, in how to use GarageBand to record, polish, and release their own music. So I wanted to take some of that knowledge and experience and boil it down into a quick start guide for you beginners. So if you're new to GarageBand and you've always wanted to learn how to use it to record your own music, this video is for you. So ladies and gentlemen, Let's dive in. Now, before we jump into our 10-step GarageBand Bootcamp, let me give you a quick little tour of what the GarageBand interface looks like. When you click on the GarageBand icon, it will typically pull up the last project you were working on. But to go back to the main menu of GarageBand, simply exit that project, and you'll see this window here, which is the startup window for GarageBand. You can click the Recent tab to see the projects that you've been working on recently. But I wanna show you a few things under the New Project tab, where you can click an empty project, and then down here at the bottom, you can choose the speed of your song, the key signature of your song, the time signature of your song and you can even tell GarageBand if you want to record with a built-in microphone or with an external microphone as well as you can tell GarageBand whether you want to hear sound come out from your built-in speakers or from an external speaker source. Now don't get confused about this stuff let's just hit create and start a new project. The first thing that GarageBand asks is what kind of audio track do you want to add into your project first? We're going to talk a lot more about each of these four tracks, but for now, I'm just going to create a software instrument track. And now we're inside of the GarageBand interface. You can hit your space bar to start and stop a project. You can also hit enter to get back to the beginning of a project or you can click anywhere in the ruler to jump to a specific part of your project. Then, of course, to record, you're going to hit the red record button. You can also hit R on your typing keyboard to start or stop a recording. Now that we know how to get a project started in GarageBand, let's dive into our 10-step bootcamp on how to make your first song in GarageBand. So let's get started with our first two steps. And these two steps are a bit more technical in nature, but if you'll go ahead and get them out of the way, you'll thank yourself later. So step number one, I would recommend that you update your GarageBand software to the latest version of GarageBand to make sure that you have all of the awesome tools and features that GarageBand makes available to you. To do this, simply go to the App Store and click on your Updates tab to see if you need to make an update. You can also search for GarageBand in the search bar and then click Update from the GarageBand page. If you don't need to update, then it'll simply say Open and you're good to go. And while we're on the topic of updating, I would also recommend that you update your sound library. You can do that one instrument at a time by clicking the little icon, or you can make it easy by downloading them all at once by going up to the GarageBand drop-down menu, hovering over Sound Library, and then clicking Download All Available Sounds. This will make sure that your library is updated and you have every single instrument that GarageBand makes available. Now, my pro tip for this step is that you'll have to be patient. And just know that it could take up to a day for all of these downloads and updates to fully run their course. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use your computer and it doesn't even mean you can't use GarageBand. It simply means you might have to wait a while for these updates to kick in. Don't ask me why. Now, let's move on to step number two. And here I wanna highly recommend that you set the tempo or the time of your song before you start your project. If you don't know the BPM or beats per minute of your song, then simply use the tap tempo feature on the opening window of GarageBand. And GarageBand will automatically tell you what speed it is. And then once you're in your project, I wanna highly recommend that you record with the click track of the metronome on. Because you see several of GarageBand's tools are time-based. For example, like the automatic drummer, not to mention any echoes or delays that would be on your vocals or guitars. All of these are gonna go off the tempo that you have set in your project header. Now here's a pro tip when it comes to using the metronome. Some of us really struggle to play along to a robotic clicking sound. So if you're having trouble staying on time, I would recommend you create an automatic drummer track. Now we're gonna talk a lot more about the automatic drummer in step six, but for our purposes now, know that it'll create a drum groove 
groove that's perfectly timed. And for most of us, it's a lot easier to play in time along to a drum set than it is to that robotic clicking sound. All right, so we've completed the technical steps and I wanna give you a high five because your songs are gonna sound more professional and now it makes room for the fun steps. Steps three through six have to do with learning how to use the four kinds of audio tracks that GarageBand makes available to you. So we'll start with software instruments. Did you know that GarageBand offers you a huge library of instruments that you can add into your projects, including basses, drum kits, electronic drum kits, orchestral instruments, synthesizers, pads, pianos, organs, claps, and a bunch of other really cool and crazy sounds. And you can use these software instruments to fill out your song or even write songs entirely out of these software instruments. You make it a But it gets even better. Did you know that you can control and record all of these software instruments using your typing keyboard? All you have to do is use the keyboard shortcut Command K, which brings up this window called the Musical Typing feature, where you can control and record these instruments with your typing keyboard. Without a doubt, software instruments are one of my favorite features within GarageBand, and I use them all the time. Hey. Step four is to familiarize yourself with the microphone track. And you'll select this track anytime you wanna record something using your microphone. Now, of course that includes recording vocals, but don't think of it only as a vocal track. It's more accurately a microphone track. So you would use this track anytime you're using your microphone to record. Maybe it's vocals, maybe it's your acoustic guitar, maybe you play violin and you wanna record it using a microphone. No matter what, if you're using your microphone, you'll use the microphone track. And within that track, I wanna show you a couple of features. Number one is the monitor button. If you wanna be able to hear yourself when you record, then you'll engage the orange monitor button. And I'll just go ahead and say here, if you're recording with a microphone, you should definitely be wearing headphones when you do it because you only want your microphone to pick up the sound you're recording. You don't want it picking up the sound of the metronome or other tracks that you've recorded. So make sure you wear headphones, even if it's just earbuds. And beyond that, I wanna show you that you can rename these audio tracks by simply double clicking on the text. Now, this might seem like a simple thing, but I found from experience that this actually helps my project workflow be more efficient and way less confusing. Step five is learning to use the guitar track. Now, if you don't play guitar, then feel free to skip to step six. But if you do play guitar, you're gonna be really excited to find out that GarageBand offers you tons of sounds and presets to choose from when recording your guitar. Simply create a guitar track and you can choose from a whole library of preset sounds. There's clean options, crunch options, distorted options, and experimental options. And then of course, clean crunch and experimental bass options as well. These presets sound awesome, and they're where I spend the majority of my time when I'm playing guitar. But if you're a guitar specialist and you wanna shape your sound, then you can click on the amp simulator, where you can switch out the model, the amp, the cabinet, the mic, the placement of the mic. I mean, it's crazy. And you can also bring up the pedal board where you can add pedals, remove pedals, adjust their parameters, turn them on and off. I, again, it's crazy. But I'll just say for me, I spend the majority of my time in presets. So start there and it'll sound great. The last thing I wanna say about the guitar track is GarageBand actually offers you a built-in tuner. So you can make sure you're in tune before you start your session and then you could retune again maybe halfway through your session to make sure you're still in tune. So now we're moving into step number six and we're gonna look at the final type of audio track that GarageBand offers and that is the automatic drummer. The automatic drummer gives you over 20 drummers in seven different genres and each of these drummers will add their own flavor and style into your song. So all you have to do is click on the genre that you think best fits your song and then try out a few drummers within that genre to see which one gels best with your sound. Then if that wasn't enough, you can go into the edit window and click on some preset beats 
You can adjust the dynamics of their performance. Do you want it loud, soft? Do you want it simple or complex? Then you can even select elements within the drum kit to take out or to add in, as well as adjust the dynamics of each element within the drum kit. And then you can adjust how many fills or lack of fills you want in the drummer's performance. And lastly, you can add a bit of swing to it if your song has a swing. So to me, this is one of the biggest tools that GarageBand gives you, especially if you're not a drummer. But even if you are a drummer, I still think it's an incredible tool for generating ideas. So we've gone through the four types of tracks that you can use in GarageBand. Great job! And now, steps seven and eight are gonna have to do with cleaning up your performances, also known as editing. In step seven, we're gonna look at editing your software instrument performances. You'll start by double-clicking the region that you wanna work on, or by clicking the scissor tool. Or if you want a keyboard shortcut, you can hit E on your typing keyboard. They're all gonna lead you to the same place, and that is the edit window. And here in the edit window, you can adjust your performance in lots of really powerful ways. You can adjust the length of a note. You can adjust the pitch of a note. You can copy and paste and add a new note that wasn't there before. Or you can delete notes that were mistakes and get them out of there. And the last thing I wanna show you is the quantize feature. Now, quantize is just a fancy word for snapping your performance into perfect timing. And you'll find this tool by clicking on the region tab, going down to time quantize, and then choosing a time signature that you wanna to quantize to. And just like that, your entire performance is now perfectly timed. And I'll just say for me personally, this has become a huge part of my production process. It helps me sound more professional and it helps me edit a lot faster. In step eight, we're gonna clean up our live audio tracks. So again, that would be vocals or guitars, anything we recorded using our microphone. And here's the one big thing I want to show you. A lot of times at the front end or tail end of an audio recording, there can be extra noise like clicks or pops or moving around. And these are sounds that we don't want to make it into our song. So we need to eliminate them. And you can do that by simply hovering your mouse over the beginning or end of a region. And when you hover over the bottom half of that region, the trim tool will appear. Then you can simply click and drag and eliminate those sounds that you don't want to hear. But just make sure you don't trim too far and get rid of your breath or chop off a syllable at the end. We're getting towards the end here and step number nine is polishing your tracks through presets. When you click on any live audio track, you'll see a library of presets that you can use to polish that track. If it's a vocal, then of course you're gonna click on voice and you can choose lots of different mixing presets that will help polish that vocal and make it sound more like it was done in a studio. I will trust in God in every season. I will pour out my heart before him. Then you can follow the same process with your acoustic guitar. And then if you click on guitar and bass, it's actually just the same thing as the guitar track. Now, if you have some experience and you wanna mix your own sound, you can do that by clicking on the Smart Controls window. You can also use B as a keyboard shortcut to get into the window. And here, you can shape your sound any way you want to, using EQ, compression, reverb, and any other plugins you might commonly find. But that said, if you're just getting started, then click on a preset and it will sound great. And that, my friends, brings us to our 10th and final step, which is how to export and share your songs. All you need to do is hit the share menu and then select export song to disc. So you'll name your track, then select where you want it to be exported to, and then choose your file type. And here's my quick tip on file types. If you're still working on the song and you just wanna export it to share with a friend and go, hey, how does this sound to you? Then I would recommend going with the MP3 format. It's the smallest file type, it's the easiest to send, it's the easiest to open and load. So start there if you just wanna listen real quick. But on the other hand, if you're completely finished with the project and you're ready to send it to be mixed or mastered or to have it published on a distributing platform like iTunes or Spotify, then you're definitely gonna wanna go with the WAV file format. This file type is an uncompressed file type, which means it will be a bigger file, but it'll also have just a bit more quality. Then you simply hit export, wait a minute, and you're ready to share your song. So that is 10 steps to getting started in GarageBand. 
And if you followed along, you are well on your way to becoming a GarageBand hero. So I hope you enjoyed the GarageBand Bootcamp and I hope you feel more confident to create and record your own music using GarageBand. And if you wanna continue growing, I have a lot more resources on GarageBand. Check out the links in the description for more YouTube tutorials like auto-tune in GarageBand, mixing pop vocals in GarageBand, my favorite keyboard shortcuts in GarageBand, and more. Beyond that, be sure to check out my free mini course called GarageBand 101. This is a five-part video course where you can learn even more about GarageBand in less than 30 minutes. And then my biggest resource on GarageBand is my GarageBand Masterclass that has over 3,000 students around the world. This course shows you all about GarageBand's creative writing tools as well as gives you a step-by-step -step guide for how to produce and polish your own music. So go check out these GarageBand resources and I will catch you in the next video.